finally, we are back in Call of the Wild the Angler to go for another fishing trip, and I've been meaning to get back to this game for a couple of weeks at this point. And between the real life hunting content and Way of the Hunter, it's just been tough to work into the schedule, but finally we're back out here today, and we have two main goals for this trip. The first one is to really try to catch a bluegill. I don't know how, but that is still the only species that we have yet to catch, and I would like to think that's going to be fairly simple, but we'll see how that goes. The other is to try to do a little bit of lake trout fishing with some lower poundage line. I think 55 pound braid is just too much, and it makes it too easy to bring them in. Even the biggest ones seem to not really be as big a challenge as you would like. So the first step is going to be buying some new braid, and I noticed here at the store, has that little skull plate back there always been there? Because I think I would have noticed that straight away, but I don't remember seeing that prior to the update. But anyway, we need to kind of switch things around here. I think we have too much uh, gear at the moment, but I'm thinking either 44 pound or 38 pound. I mean, the even a diamond lake trout is 35, but you can get them up around the 50 range. And what I don't want to have happen is hook into a 50 pounder and have line that's not going to be capable. So I think 38 is going to be what we'll go with. And hopefully that's going to make it more entertaining. That we will throw into our storage. And then for now we'll go and try to look for bluegill with our ultralight setup. So my plan for bluegill, at least to begin with, is going to be to try to explore some other places that we haven't been to yet. And this is partially why. So when we go to the map now because we've located this new body of water, it'll kind of tell us what is around. And according to this, Rainbow Trout, Mountain Whitefish, and Golden Trout. Now, I don't know if those are the only species in this pond, but that is one thing, even if it's not specifically catching bluegill, just the ability to find some new areas and find some new fish, I think is going to be good. So, we'll just try with Red on our hook, out there where that fish just jumped up, and see if we get a hit. We can see a Golden Trout just in front of us swimming around in the lily pads. I also do see right over there by our bobber, there is a fish, and now we've got a hit. So with the ultralight setup, it's going to be, I think, a little more interesting. Now this one, if it is a rainbow like I thought, it's definitely, you know, more than what our 30% drag can do, but I think we should be able to bring it in relatively easily. Now, you do see, and I want to make sure we don't snap the line here, you can see there's a bit of a glitch with this rod. The There's like a, a bit of it that kind of comes out when the rod bends, but I really like the look of it, so I decided to stick with it for today. But I do think, you know, this is really the thing that inspired me to do the lake trout with some weaker line. It's far more fun, I think, to have to really work to get the fish in, even if it is just like a decent gold. And assuming this is a rainbow, I imagine that's kind of what we're looking at. This is four pound fluorocarbon, by the way, so nothing crazy but enough to kind of slowly work this guy in, I think. And it is going to be different working with feet instead of meters. I think it is 11 feet or something like that where we got to get the fish into. And it does, in a weird way, kind of help to feel like you're making more progress. But even closer than 11, that was a good sized rainbow though. This one, I gotta think we almost have him there. I can see him there in the water. There we go. So first fish of the day, is almost a gold rainbow. I think gold is right around 10 pounds. I was certain that I put bread on that. Apparently we caught that with a bloodworm though. Interesting to apparently have the wrong bait, but that was, according to the handbook, basically why I went for the bread. That's supposed to be good for the bluegill, so let's make sure that we have that set up properly, and we'll try it again and see what happens. The bread really does not seem to be drawing much interest, and I kind of think that's a good thing. Assuming that that really does work well for bluegill, that could work to our advantage. If some of these other species that are quite common aren't going to hit bread, that might make it a little bit easier to catch a bluegill, but I wanted to look at some of the changes that have been made with the most recent update, and one thing I really like is the change to the drill speed. So if we go ahead and cast out here, and I want to get kind of past the lily pads and close to the water, We'll go ahead and cast close to the other side. And when we go down to one speed, you can see we're actually reeling slowly now. That was one of the things that bugged me the most about the original release. You were reeling really fast and covering like we are here, maybe a foot every two seconds. It just didn't make a lot of sense. This is a lot more realistic. And maybe if one time speed was 
just a little faster than this, it could be better. But in general, I think this is a really big improvement. I can't tell what it is, but there is a relatively small looking fish kind of heading towards our bait. I don't know if it's going to hit it or not. That might be what it's going to do. It's so far away, I really can't make out what's happening, but we're getting a hit. Just got to make sure that we time this right. If that's a bluegill, that would be fantastic. It's taken forever to take the bait. Finally got an actual strike. It looks short, which is what we're looking for. See if we can get him in here to where we can tell. It might be a perch or a bass. What was that? It is a bluegill. It actually looked too big when we were bringing it in. Cool. Well, that only took an hour and 19 minutes. I know in the video it's probably two or three, and that's, I guess, what happens when fishing with a bait that basically nothing else will hit. It's funny that on the way in it really did look almost like too slender to be a bluegill. Let's try again. So there's another one, I think. Now that I'm pretty confident that's what that is. I saw another, maybe 40 feet out. Gotta try to cast, like, not all that far. Eh, 68 feet, probably too far. Let's bring this into 40 and just let it sit. I think there's another coming up out of there. They are unbelievably tiny in the water. It's no wonder I've never seen one and, and known to cast out. Looks like it's going to take the bait. Again, a very long kind of messing with the bait before an actual strike. Maybe another indicator that it is a bluegill. And a fair, fairly realistic way that they hit. Definitely don't mind that. So I don't know, bigger or smaller? I think smaller for this one. That looked... Oh my god. <laughs> that... <laughs> 0.9 pounds is hilarious. That looks very similar to... Like a... A bluegill or a sunfish swim bait that we used to try to catch bass? I'm glad we caught that, but maybe that's not the best indication of, like, how small they are in the water. I do think, you know, it was 70 or 80 feet out where we caught the first one. I do think maybe that you can see as you're walking along the shore. Let's give it one more try. I don't know what that is servicing out there, but maybe we can find out. Whatever it is is kind of working its way in towards our bait, so I'm assuming bluegill again. I'll show on the map if you guys want to see where it's at, by the way. I'm assuming I'm probably the last person to catch a bluegill, though, so it might not be the most needed information. Something pretty big just jumped out of the water out there at a distance. This one is a little bit tougher to bring in. Let's actually see. That was a mountain whitefish. Interestingly enough, they will take bread. Now, the lakes that we were at, or the ponds, really, earlier on, they were apparently one of the fish species that were in those ponds, and they never hit. I do want to maybe grab a boat. That looked like a bass that jumped out of the water to me. I'm seeing some all right sized perch, but no sign of any bass that would have surfaced. So I'm not too sure whatever happened to that, but we'll just kind of bring a spinnerbait by and see if we can get a perch to bite. I know that I saw one out there that I would have thought would be in the area of silver or gold. So worth a try before we move on. And if I'm right, that's the one that I saw. And, of course, with 4-pound test, probably any perch is not going to be too difficult to bring in. Looked kind of decent enough, I guess. That was a sauger. Alright, I mean, that's pretty cool. I thought I saw, though, a yellow perch out there. Maybe that's what it was. And as we get ready to head out, I don't think I showed the area on the map where we caught the bluegill. It was literally just right by this uh, outpost here. There's a bridge that goes across here. We were out in this area when we got those, but we're going to grab ourselves a boat. And we went up all the way to the Northwest Lake. The reason I like it so much is it is deeper than the longest line. So if we can find a spot, there are areas 400 feet deep and plus. And I've mentioned this before, but just the idea of having like a depth finder as a DLC or an update or something to actually have it on the boat it would be nice to not have to just kind of jump out and try to test, but we obviously can see the depth when we cast, and I think just kind of based on where we are, probably out in that general direction should be the deepest spot. According to that, we went over the max. I don't even know what the max is, but 
we may see it, actually we will see it, as we retrieve this lure, assuming that we don't actually have a fish hit first. So I believe either we're over the max that the depth can show, or beyond the max the line can actually reach. We'll kind of wait and see when the line maxes out, and it's going to be a long wait. We're 60 feet down now, and we've got well over 300 feet of line, so we'll just kind of let this drop. And it looks like 328.1 feet is going to be the max for our line. Now you'll notice it's still dropping deeper, and the reason is gravity's kind of pulling it back towards us, and still taking the bait down deeper, just kind of making the angle that the line's out a little bit less. So what we'll do is start to retrieve, and that 328.1 is going to be the number that we look for on the actual depth of the water itself. Eventually we'll get to that point. I don't know where that's going to be as we retrieve along, but I'm curious if that is like the maximum when it goes back to that 0, 0.0. In the meantime, we may hook into a lake trout down there. That would be amazing. I would like to get, you know, 30 or 40 feet of line back first, but we'll see what happens. And that must have been it. We went just past that 328 feet, and immediately the depth comes up. So I guess that's when it starts to turn back over to zero. I'm not sure why it doesn't just calculate the depth even beyond that, and hopefully eventually it will. But it is kind of cool to cast, you know, where your line can't even reach the bottom. And we'll just bring this up. I should note, by the way, and hopefully this pauses when I do this, we are running with a, if I go to the right rod, a hook size 2 spinner. We've only jigged four lake trout in the past. This actually works pretty darn well. Now, I'm not sure at this depth how well it's going to work, but hopefully we'll find out. Ooh, there we go. 180 feet down. Now, I don't think it's a particularly large one, because we're able to pretty much just start bringing them our way straight away. That's always the thing, though, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, I did think we are going to catch anything on that cast. Half of the point of casting there was to show just how deep this lake is, but I'm going to say, based on how easy we can bring this guy in, probably a silver or a bronze, and it's just going to be a lot of this. Now, ideally, by the end we can hook into something in that 30 pound range, or better, I mean, a diamond lake trout would be fantastic, and uh, maybe we can see a little more of a fight. This, however, is just going to be lifting a pretty heavy fish up from the bottom, just, you know, five feet at a time or so. Finally starting to get pretty close, and you can see we're actually making faster progress as the fish wears out. I'm hoping we'll kind of get to see it just below the surface. Rarely do I get, like, a decent look at a lake trout on the way up. So I'm trying to take this slow, because it's really soon, where we can just bring it in. And he's kind of heading over to where he's going to be underneath our arms, so we may not actually get to see it. I guess we'll just kind of bring him in and take a look that way. I saw him coming up out. That is, I mean, halfway decent, I guess, at 16 pounds. But... Considering the line weight and what we're looking to do with getting a better fight, we're going to need a little bit better than that. So that was a really long retrieve. You figure maybe it's like a foot every two seconds and we had made it 150 feet or so. Takes several minutes to even get into that point. So let's try over here. Eh, still going beyond that 328 feet range. So I guess it'll be a long time again. I do always, in these spots, imagine like you know, those 50 pound lake trout, or maybe even bigger, I don't know how big they get in this game, you know, lurking in those kinds of depths, maybe that is the case, and if we hook into one, again, that far down, that could be really tough. Okay, that is interesting. About the same size fish, I'm gonna say, because not difficult to bring it up off the bottom again, but right about that 180, 190 foot range is where we're getting hits, which really begs the question, should we be casting down to, you know, 330 or so, if we're going to have to retrieve that far to get anything? I was thinking anyway, just because that takes so long, we're probably going to find ourselves a spot, maybe on another lake, that is 150, 160 feet deep, and it does two things. Number one, it makes the retrievals a little bit faster and the potential to cast to other areas. The other thing it does, though, is if we do hook into something that's going to take a lot of line, we already have, you know, 200 extra feet before we reach the end, whereas doing this, if we got a hit, you know, right when we cast out, then we're kind of in trouble, but in the meantime, we'll get this guy lifted up off the bottom, and we'll take a look and see, I'm assuming, you know, again, 15 pounds-ish, and really, even when they are, you know, fairly easy to bring in around this size, these are still by far my favorite fish to catch. I just like that, especially with the bigger ones, you really feel the weight of the fish when you're pulling them up like this. And we'll get to see with this guy 
if he is any different size, this one is about 0.2 pounds less and still, you know, three feet long just about. That's a pretty good sized fish, so let's let him go as well. And I can't remember exactly where it was, but there was a lake somewhere over here on this side of the map. I almost want to say this one. It was a pretty good depth for stuff like this, so we'll give it a shot. I think probably anywhere in here should work. So the depth at this area is a lot more kind of manageable in terms of multiple casts. 144 feet, I saw we cast it over about 160. So hopefully this will be a slightly quicker process. And I guess we'll see, but it's like 140 less feet of line we gotta bring in every time. And considering we were getting bites at like 180, this should be a lot better. So depth wise, we're not too much different, but it should be, wow, way, way quicker. And this time, we might be into something a little bit better. It's still not like taking line, but the tension is something I've basically never seen with a lake trout. And again, that's because we have 38 pound braid as opposed to 55, but this could be a little better. Despite that though, we're able to, especially again, as it kind of tires out, just kind of lift it up off the bottom at will Gotta be in the area you would think of 20 pounds just because of the tension that we saw. And we'll find out really, really quickly here as we're able to bring it in so fast. Do a little bit of pumping maybe to speed up the process at the end. But that kind of surprised me. It was maybe, what, 10 seconds? And we got a hit? That one is right about 20 pounds, 19.84. Doing pretty well with that spinner. I will say though, I've had on numerous occasions probably like back to back or even maybe three times in a row going over 30 pounds with this same setup other than heavier line. So it's gotta just be a matter of catching in the right spot. And I mean, we can only hope this will be the one to get us into a bigger fish. I was hoping to, and, and we still have time if we can catch one soon, go and do a little bit of fishing for catfish. I've really enjoyed that as we started to find out some locations to actually get them. That was quick. Again though, not a big one. And I might even say in this instance, a pretty small one. This has been the easiest one to bring in thus far. And I would have to assume that it'll be under 15 pounds. Now our drag is set higher than it was when we brought in some of those smaller ones. So it could be that, but it just immediately, it was obvious this one wasn't very big. And it took at least a couple seconds with the prior ones to know that. So this guy is 12 pounds, our smallest by I think two or three pounds so far. And I think that's gonna be the move. Let's go back. Let's either buy or get from our storage a size one spinner and just see if that makes a difference. Well, maybe there's some hope, but it feels like it's the same size fish. We have gone even bigger with our lore choice, I guess. Maybe so. And I guess the other option is we could try another lake. Maybe some of the bigger ones are just not in either of the lakes that we've been in today. Because this just has been basically all average size lake trout the entire time. And again, 15 pounds ish, I'm going to guess. And at 19 pounds, maybe a little bit bigger than expected. But that, you know, because it's by weight, we're at 50% mastery on that lure already, which I don't think matters at all, really. I'm not even sure exactly what it does. I guess for the heck of it, we'll give it one more shot. Casting out to about the same depth. Please be big this time. Oh, I think maybe we finally have it. Not gonna say it's gigantic because our line is smaller, but this is what I like to see when you're just kind of locked. We're not moving and the fish isn't moving. He is coming upwards a bit, but he's kind of dragging our line outwards and keeping the distance at the exact same. This is a long period of time of being locked in though. Now we're kind of breaking through and he's got himself tired out a little. And it's gonna be this, basically, for the first time today, long process of just pumping and moving them, you know, two, three feet at a time. Once you kind of get through that, sometimes you'll get this again, and that's usually a really good sign where they're kind of locked in again. But normally, you can at least start to make some headway. This may be the difference of using lighter weight line, but this is kind of what I was hoping to see. You actually have to, you know, work to get it up off the bottom as opposed to just reel and, you know, wait the, the 45 seconds that it takes. 
it does appear as though... Well, I was gonna say it appears as though we've, we've gotten through that, but we're just about locked again, starting to make a little headway. We're at 80% drag, so it takes a lot for a fish to be able to take line. And even still, we weren't able to actually bring him in. Now we're starting to get a little somewhere with just reeling. I think I'm going to try to be sure that we keep on pumping as well. Because it picks him up a lot off the bottom. If you watch the depth in yellow there, we're going to go up about 5-6 feet. That makes a heck of a difference. That much slack as we reel it in before you know he takes the rod down again. And I will be 100% honest, it's still not the fight I was hoping for. I really want to get into one that actually takes line. You get into that kind of, you know, standstill almost, where the fish can't take any line and we can't reel it in. But that's been as difficult as, as it's been with any lake trout. And, you know, when it comes to something like the Northern Pike that we kind of think that was 13 pounds or so on 13 pound test that was at the max line length, that feels a lot more difficult. But as for now, I'm assuming we're looking at like a 30-ish pound lake trout. Maybe better, I don't know, given the fact that our line is something I've not caught a big one with yet. But only a couple more feet and we'll get to see. I'm excited to see him kind of coming up out of the water. That looks like a pretty big fish. We got to see it for a second there. I stopped on the reel just to look. Looks like a good one. That is a good one. Man. That kind of hurts. <laughs> Diamond is 35 pounds. 34.14 pounds and diamond is 35. That's a 48, 49 inch fish. I mean, that's our biggest one. I'm not going to complain too much. And we've kind of come full circle. Once again, float fishing like we were for the sunfish. And we're going to go with hot dogs. And I think maybe, I don't know, max depth would make a lot of sense for catfish. And we'll just see if we can pull anything out of here. Well, that unfortunately is fairly predictable. Switch to leeches, and the pike at least are pretty interested. I'm not sure where the catfish are right now, but I'm not getting any interest from any catfish whatsoever. At least we can bring in a relatively average sized pike, I would say. Maybe four pounds in that area, 4.62 in fact. They always work pretty good for pike, but I don't know where the catfish are. I've had pretty good luck here between like hot dogs or cheese, and we can try switching to cheese if we still have it. Sometimes that quick change menu doesn't work, so we'll have to do it through here. I do still have it on me, so we'll try that too before we just do pike fishing instead. So rather than just giving up on catfish at the last area, I decided to come to another location, which also lists channel catfish as one of the fish in the area, and once again, whether it's hot dogs or cheese, we're just not getting any luck at all. And Catfish are often more active at night, so it could just be if it was later in the day we'd have a little bit more luck, but what I have been seeing are some smaller fish surfacing every now and then, so I figure we'll try to catch whatever they are, yellow perch, mountain whitefish, or something kind of in that size range. Just kind of get something before we wrap up. We are closing in on three and a half hours out here now, so I'd like to maybe catch something before we wrap up since the catfish aren't cooperating. Man, finally! We got something there. I was starting to worry that we were just completely doing everything wrong, but we switched to a slightly bigger spinnerbait, and I think our second cast with that, we finally looked into something. I'm not even sure what it is. It looks like maybe a big mountain whitefish, actually. Not too bad. 1.71 pounds. I'm not sure how big they get. Three or four, I think, is kind of their max. So at least we got a little bit something for our efforts coming out here and looking for catfish. That'll be something we try to do a little bit more again in the future. We've done it a couple times, and I just think back to, I think it was our first expedition ever. We saw a really big one, and it would have been somewhere out like in the main lake. I think we took off from here, so like in this area, and it just looked gigantic. And I know like 20 pounds-ish is diamond for them. Wouldn't be shocked if that would have been a diamond if we had the proper equipment at the time, and it just makes me want to keep on going back and looking for them. And for that same reason, that's why I enjoy going for the lake trout and try to get bigger and bigger ones of those. If we could get one pound heavier than we got today, we could get ourselves a diamond lake trout, and maybe that'll happen next time we head out as well. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.